we'll just we'll just get started. Um, I record these sessions, and uh, and then I go back and I listen to them, and I'm making a YouTube channel so that that I can share it with people later that can't make it. So, uh, uh, and this morning we had a great crowd this morning on the East Coast time, and then I think that normally I have a good crowd in the in the you know, the, the the Central time, but they were. Um, uh, nobody was there, and I, I figured it was, uh, uh, you know, because of the weather. So this is actually the mountain time call, correct? Yeah, 8, 8, 8.46. Whatever, it is what it is. So anyway, I wanted to, um, I want to share with you guys the, what, what I call uh, the approach for the uh, handling outbound calls, because outbound calls are such an important part of the overall piece of the puzzle. So what, what I've determined... What I've determined is that we... Hey, by the way, guys, listen, we have some more people in the room. If, the, if there's feedback in any way, please let me know and I'll mute your lines. Okay? So if it starts, to, if the sound quality on your end gets gnarly, let me know and I'll mute all the phones, okay? On this end. If, if you have to put us on hold or whatever. Anyway, I'll just let me know, communicate, and I can mute. Here's, here's what I wanted to share with you. That in the auto repair and tire business, it's a three-act play. Okay, Act one at the, at the phone, right here as you see, right, on the cartoon. Three acts of commitments. Commitment, 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 each, each act. So I just want to review that with you, and then I'll show you my approach for handling outbound calls. Inbound calls, the commitment on the first call is, I can help you with that. You're in the right place. I'm going to take care of you. I want to do it today, right now, or at 2 o'clock, choice close. But be clear that, that it's a commitment move, and a commitment is a declaration. I can help you with that, right? I'm the guy. I'm going to take care of you at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, choice close. Simple. That's the move on the inbound call. At the counter, act two in the play, the customer is now in the store. You've made the commitment. They're, they've arrived. Three commitments. Three commitments at the counter. There could be more, but there's three that I think are mission mission critical. Okay, first, let's just say it's Mrs. Jones standing here with the baby, all right? I'm so happy that you came in today, Mrs. Jones. I spoke with you on the phone. I'm going to take care of the oil change, and I'm going to take care of those two tires for you. I'm going to have the car ready by 5 o'clock. Commitment number one, take care of the primary concern item. Put it in, when you, and again, commitment is a time element. I'll have it ready by 5, or I'll call you by 5, whatever. Some commitment to button it up, right? That's number one commitment. Number two commitment at the point of sale, I strongly recommend you let her know, especially for new customers. My job, my only job, Mrs. Jones, now that you're here with me, my only job is to take care of you, is to be your car guy. For life, as long as you're in this neighborhood, I'm your guy. Declare yourself to the customer. It's like a marriage. It's like a declaration of marriage. Same thing. For life, as long as you're in the neighborhood, as long as I'm here, I'll take care of you. I'm your car guy. Number two commitment, right? A lifetime, big commitment. This is important because it ties, it ties to the third act. I'm going to show you. The commitment... On the first call, the commitment at the counter leads up to the commitment at the point of sale on the outbound call or at the counter. All right. The third commitment at the counter when they're standing there is, as your car guy, as your car guy, what, one of my main missions, one of my main objectives for you is to inspect your vehicle. I inspect vehicles. I make sure that my ASC certified technicians inspect the cars that I bring in because I want it to run right for you. So I'm going to inspect a 29-point inspection, 68-point inspection, 252 points. Whatever your inspection process is, you got to tell them right then and there. As your car guy, this is what I do. One of the services I provide for you. If they don't want it, they'll tell you right then and there. All right? But you make the offer. This is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to inspect the vehicle for you. If I find anything, I'll call you. When I have, I'll call and give you a status report anyway as we're progressing with the work. Okay? Now, so those are the three at the point of sale. 
I'm going to take care of the primary concern item. I'm your car guy for life. I'm going to take care of you. And as your car guy, I inspect vehicles. And this is setting the table for act number three. Act number three, again, is a commitment move. I'm going to show you now. I'm, I'm going to go to the workbook. I'm going to go to the workbook. Bear with me one second. Move these controls out of the way. By the way, I've got so much, just so you guys know, so much uh, mileage out of this car. You know, this cartoon is like, it's got to be 13, 14 years old. And it was done by my friend Arnie Levin, who's a cartoonist for the New Yorker magazine. You might recognize the style. But uh, anyway, all right, let's go to the page, page eight in the workbook. All right, page eight is the inbound approach. Now, let me just look at it because this, this is important because you guys, in the store, you can practice this stuff. Practice it, practice it, practice it. I, just a little side note, I sing the national anthem all over the country. I decided five years ago I wanted to learn to do it. I used to have a rock and roll band years ago, so I knew how to practice. I sh I'm only sharing this for one reason. When I decided I wanted to learn the national anthem and how to sing it, I had never sang a cappella before. Right? So I got, the, I got the lyrics out, I put it out, and I started, but I knew how to work it. And I work it just like this. I would work, oh, say, can you? And, and I practice line by line by line by line, word by word by word. Two, three thousand times I've done it now over the last five years. Vowel by vowel, word by word. Every inch of it, practice, practice, practice. Because when it's showtime, and there's 5,000 people standing there, which I've done, and they hand you the microphone, it's like, okay, you got to know your stuff. It's the same thing with you guys on the phone. It's mission critical. This is time. You have to have this stuff in your body. It has to live in your bones, like, a, like, a, like, like you're getting up to bat in a baseball game. So anyway, here's, again, here's the approach. Thanks for calling Cassidy Tire. This is Dan. How can I help you? They're going to make their request. Oh, I can help you with that. Absolutely. Who am I speaking with? Have you ever done business with Cassidy before? You haven't? Well, you are in the right place for tires and brakes and everything else. As a matter of fact, my job, my only job, we're down here, my only job working with new customers is to become your car guy. I want to see you down here right now. Can you come in now or at 2 o'clock? Choice clothes. So again, the move up front, declaration. I can help you with that. I'm going to take care of you today. I can do it. Choice clothes, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, come on down. All right? Simple. Then they come in. You do the same. You do what I said before, the three commitments. Now we're going to, to this page here on page 9 in the workbook. Because this is what I promised I was going to work with you on today. Assuming... Let's assume that you did a great job on the upfront call. You did a great job at the counter, right? You're their car guy. They know it. They know that you're their guy or gal. There's no question about it. See, by the way, this is important what I just said. If they, you get to, you're doing brain, when you speak and you communicate with, with your customers, you're doing brain surgery. They will think whatever they think unless you tell them what to think. If they, think, if they think that you're their car guy, it's because you told them. I'm your car. I'm your guy. It's very, very, very important to say that, to make that move with them. They can learn it over time, over the next two or three years, or you can do it from day one. That's why this is a design issue, I think. You're going to plant that seed in their head at every chance you get. Okay? Just, I'm your... I don't know the automotive world like you guys do. I don't claim to be a car expert. I'm an expert on this stuff. I know how I know how communication, I know the whole background, I know the biology of it. You know, I know this stuff cold. Anyway, all right, so here's the here's the foundation moves for the outbound call or the call, not the call, but the meeting when you're sitting in the in the waiting room. Okay, so let's let's just say we're making the outbound call to Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones, hi, this is Dan with XYZ Tire and Automotive. How are you? Can you talk for a moment? I've got that report. We, we did, we're, we're working on your car. So we're right here on this line. We've got the car up on the lift. We did the, we're in the process of doing the oil change. We're replacing the tires, just like I promised. 
We're going to have the car ready by 5. Again, just like I promised. PMSG, tell me something good. I want to refer to this diagram back here for a minute on the board. This is your customer. This is really important. Your customer. And on top of her head, right here. This is her baggage in life. This is her money issues. All weighing down on her. Like we all have we all have issues in life, you know, the money issues, the time issues, the kid issues. You know, we, we've got uh, you know, husband issues. We have no, we've got job issues. We've got transportation issues. Get what? Now she has car issues and it's all, it's all weighing down on her head, right? Just like all of us, the pressures in life. When, when you speak with that customer for the very first time about the, the inspection, you, this is a mission, mo, mo, mission critical part of the whole thing. You're either going to do one of two things. You're going to lighten her load, and she's going to go, oh, thank God. Or that how you explain what's going on is going to add more baggage to her life. You don't want to do that. You want to, by design, have her go, have her experience, oh, wow, okay, cool, he is taking care of me, okay? <laughs> and I hear too many times, Mrs. Jones, I hope you're sitting down. We got a real problem here. That's the wrong way to start out. It may be the case, but you don't say that right from the get-go. You want to create an opening. So you got to have good energy. You know, I've got good news for you, Mrs. Jones. Yeah, we've got the car. We're, we're doing the oil change. I've got the tires all ready to go, just like we talked. By the way, i got to tell you, you know, the car has 110,000 miles on it, but TMSG, it's in good shape. If we maintain it for you like we're doing on a regular basis, you've got a lot of life left in this vehicle. Now, we topped off all the fluids for you. We inspected the hoses. We inspected the belts. We inspected the air filters. We did, we did the inspections. We 29 point inspection, just like you said, just like I told you. We checked the wiper blades. We topped off, all, you know, fixed all the fluids are up to up to speed. At the same time, so you're giving her something good. At the same time, what I want to do today. Now we're down here, conversation for action, and this is the part I want to work on with you right now. What I want to do. The reason I want to do it, I'll have it done simple, simple close at the point of sale. At the same time, Mrs. Jones, what I want to do today, in addition to the tires and the oil change, is some basic, simple front brake maintenance. The reason, the reason I want to do the maintenance is because Joey, who I introduced you, he inspected it, he measured your braking material is worn out. It's only got about 5% left. And you explain to her. If she's in the shop, you walk her back and say, let me show you what I'm talking about. I promise to have the tires, the oil change, everything done for you, including the front brake maintenance by 5 o'clock, as we originally discussed. Okay, It's only going to be $650 out the door. Now, here are, the, here are, the, here are your choices. You can come in then. Or I can have Charlie drive the car over to your office. Which would you prefer? Choice closed. All right? You can come in at 5, or would 4 be better? I could probably have it done for you by 4. Again, choice closed. Give options. Give them an easy way to commit to your commitment. Okay, so I want to go to a, a we're going to come back and work on this in a minute, a little bit more, but I want to go to page. Because here's the move, guys. This is, in my opinion, the simplest, most powerful move to close a sale. I've been using this for 35, 40 years. Very effective. If you, again, if you have, if you're the car guy already, if you have a relationship with those people, and you are their car guy, you've declared yourself. Mrs. Jones, what I want to do for you today, declare it. Here's what I want to do for you today. I want to do basic front brake maintenance. I want to put four tires on your car. Whatever it is, tell her. Tell her why. The reason I want to do this for you as your car guy, let me explain to you why I want to do it. Boom. And then 
I'll have it, make a commitment to have it done. This is really important. I don't like the word, there could be times when you want to recommend something, but if it's really important and you are the car guy, the car guys don't recommend. They tell the customer, as your car guy, this is what I want to do for you. Why? Because we inspected the vehicle. And on the inspection, it shows right here that this is what's required. This is what we need to do for you right now. Okay. There could be other things you want to recommend for later. That's fine, of course, right? But what I want to do, the reason I want to do it, let's do it. I'll have it done for you by 5 o'clock, as promised. Okay? Very, very, very simple. Get this in your bones at the store level. Now I'm going to show you how to practice this with this is and this is the most that's why I share about the national handbook. You wouldn't go out in front of 5,000 people, believe me, without practicing. You shouldn't get on the phone without practicing. So here's what I want you to do going forward in the store. This is going to make a huge difference for you over the next year. Get get out um, three estimates. This is from my friends at uh, Family Tire. I see Butch just arrived too. Hi, Butch. Uh, out in uh, Lake Elsinore, Colorado, and Indiana, growing company, All right? Mm -hmm. And get three estimates. Okay. Here's one. Let me see here. Here's one. $1,699 estimate. You see what's listed here that has to be done. I call this a medium-sized estimate. Okay. We scroll down. You see the level of complexity here increases. The level of complexity increases. Okay. The approach is the same. Mrs. Jones, tell her something good. Here's what I want to do for you today. And then group this together. I want to do the air filters. I want to do belts and hoses for you. I want to do spark plugs as a part of the tune-up. The fluid exchange package. Remember I showed you those machines? I want to do that for you. And out the door, tell her the price. It's only going to be, and by the way, only is the word. You never say it's going to be like I'm stabbing you in the heart. Are you sitting down? It's only going to be for everything. $2,182. I'll have everything done for you by, and explain to her what you're going to do, why you want to do it, right? What I want to do, why I want to do it, let's do it. And then a simple one. So here's what I would start with, guys. What I, my request is get out a simple estimate that's for an oil change and then something on top of it, not complex, and practice, practice, practice the approach. Okay, and before, and before you guys call a customer about an important work order, you should practice it with somebody in the store. Work on it together. I don't know if any of you do that, but I strongly recommend it. Okay, and with the work order in hand, take the 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 uh, this approach and practice it a few times until it starts to become natural for you. We've completed. We're in the process. Well, you, maybe you haven't completed. It's still up on the lift, perhaps. We're working on your vehicle. The car will be done by 5. We've got the tires. We're doing the oil change. My assessment is that the car is in really good shape. You know, you got 120,000 miles on it. But, you know, if we keep maintaining it like this for you, Mrs. Jones, together, you, you got a, uh, there's a lot of life left in the vehicle. We did the 29-point inspection. We topped off all the fluids. We, we checked... The tires you know, are good, except the two we're going to replace, right? The, the, uh, the front tires are fine. Uh, we, we checked the battery. You know, we checked everything for you. The car is in great shape. At the same time, what I want to do today is basic front brake maintenance. And the reason I want to do it is because the front pads are worn out, down to 95%. The front brakes on the car, along with the oil change, $522.00 out the door, tax included. I will have everything done for you by 5 o'clock. You can come in then, or if you need it, I can, I can have it done for you by 4. Which would you prefer? 
Give her a choice clothes. Very, very, very simple. Okay. Um, I want to open it up for, for discussion for any questions, thoughts, observations. I see Butch. I see Timothy. Any feedback? What do you guys think? Tim, how about you? The, uh, the feedback that I like was the, um, uh, the PSMG telling something good. Yeah. I think that, uh, that's crucial. And then um, the, the practicing of the, the work order in the store uh, with, with, the, with the employees because a lot of times we hire employees and we just think they know what the hell they're doing. In fact, they, they don't. And, uh, you know, practice makes perfect, and that's just a great, a great tip. Yeah. No, you have to practice. And having an approach, I mean, this is, I think, the gift of our work. And I can't stress the practice piece enough. you got to practice it. How, how many times do you have to practice something like this in order to get this approach in your bones? Mrs. Jones, what I want to do for you today is blah, 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 blah. The reason I want to do it is da, 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 da. I'll have it done for you by five. This is not complex. But you ha it has to be in, it has to live in, the, in your bones. It has to live inside your bones. And the only way to get it in your bones is to practice it. Practice it hundreds of times. And since, you know, I, you could do it before you open, right? I would, if you're a manager of a store, I would get the work orders out and start practicing. Or if you're, a, if you're in a, one man in a store, I know some of the, our friends at Cassidy have, or one guy in the store, I would call up. One of your coworkers in another store. Work out a deal. Practice together. Share the work orders. It's easy to do, right? And call up and say, hey, Charlie, yeah, this is Joe over here at Diversity. Yeah, I want to talk with you about your vehicle. You got a minute? Cool. And then go into it. Practice, 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 practice. Your batting averages will increase. And then practice. Then move up. Move up in terms of complexity. Okay. Don't start out with something that looks like 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 this. You know, with all this stuff on it, it make you crazy, right? Start out. Start out with something simple. This is most of the work orders anyway. Are in this, you know, simple <laughs> stuff. So practice the simple stuff. Get that down. Then work up the ladder in complexity. Then work with one that's moderately complex, moderately expen more you know hot, more money, more complexity. And then work on stuff like this that's, that's way more complex. And practice it. And yes. The other thing I think, too, is um, <clears throat> telling, telling the customer this is what we want to do and this is why we want to do it instead of using the, the term recommendation. Because a lot of, uh, a lot of times we see uh, service writers or even store managers use the term recommendation with the customer, and it just makes it seem like we don't want to be the bad guy. It's optional. Well, well I mean, here's the, here's the thing. Look, look. If you were in the dentist chair, again, this is what I said before: is why this is so important to create that relationship up front. I'm your car guy. I'm your doctor. When you're in the dentist chair and the dentist looks down at you, and you've got a problem with one of your teeth, it's going to get serious if you don't fix it. He looks at you, you know, and just says, "Tim." I want you to see Sally on the way out, schedule an appointment for next week. We're going to take care of this tooth for you. We have a good option recommendation. What? What did you say, Tim? He doesn't do a recommendation to Dennis, the doctor. No, no, no. No, this is what I'm going to do for you because you have to get it done. I don't, you know, yeah. if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Now. There is a place, I believe, in the auto repair and tire business for things that you want to recommend we could look at later. That's fine. But you have to be very clear about it. And not everything is a recommendation. Listen, if you make a commitment to take care of the customer, I'll have everything done for you today at 5 o'clock. They will tell you if they can't get it done, if they can't swing it or whatever. They will tell you right then and there. And then you can manage it from that from that point. Maybe some of it you don't do right away. You can put, but it becomes manageable. Then it's not a question of if it's getting done, only a question of scheduling and budgeting. Mm -hmm. You know, not if, only when. You know, so, but I say go for it. 
You know, there, I listen to, I listen to Les Brown. You know, he's a great motivational speaker. You go online to YouTube, listen to his uh, his videos. He has his, he has a quote. He says, "Look, you might as well go for the moon. Shoot for the moon, guys. Because if you miss, if you miss the moon, you can still land in the stars. You know, that's where you're going to land. So." Go for it. If whatever shows up on that estimate, if your ASD certified technicians are doing their work the right way, and they give you a valid, you know, estimate, really well thought out, detailed estimate, deliver. Just like I said, here's what I'm going to do for you today. Here's why I want to do it. Well, let's let's do it. Okay. Give me some more feedback, guys, and then we can end this call. And you can go out and. Have some fun. Well, I think I think Keith, Dan, is just they got to practice. I mean, that's we all have to practice. That's the only way you're good, where it's fluent and and you don't have to think about it and it's not awkward. So correct. I think, like Tim said, that that's huge. So yeah. Then then uh, what we're doing, that's the biggest key to being successful because then it then it's uh, then it's an act. It's automatic. It's part of it, and you can you can respond to the customer the right way rather than having to think about it. Hey, I'm thinking about it. If you practiced on every work order for the next month before you delivered the work order, to the estimate to the to the customer. If you practiced every single time, think about how many times you would have practiced over the next month. A hundred times, two hundred times. And by then, by then it would be a non-issue. You'd have it in your bones. So I would work out, work out, which I went over this with, with Mike, you know, and, uh, and our friends there in, the, in Cassidy Tire and Tim for your crew. Work out somebody that you can practice with. And use the approach in the workbook. It's right here. It's all laid out on page, on page, page nine in the workbook. And also the, the approach is right here. What I want to do, why I want to do it, let's do it simple not complex again it's just got to be in your bones guys i'm going to run it's been great thank you so much for being here tim butch and our friends in cassidy caller number two i don't know who you are who is that who's the what's the identity of caller number two who is that is that you butch uh it, it could be <laughs> i called in on my cell phone too. oh all right okay all right good you're also on the computer. All right, guys. Peace. Have a great day. Thanks, Dan. Be on the rebound. Bye-bye. <laughs>